In this video, I'm going to unveil the secrets behind the Bank of England's upcoming meeting to determine the fate of interest rates. And the burning question that's keeping everybody on the edge of their seats right now is when are these going to come down? Now, a number of experts are predicting we'll see the interest rates on mortgages slashed in the current months. But is this a case of cognitive dissonance at play as many refuse to accept the reality of the current housing market? Or have we really reached the peak of the interest rate cycle? There is one thing we can say with certainty, and that is that over the next 12 months, the fate of interest rates are the key to unlocking the UK housing market. Our investment and buying decisions are hanging in the balance. So in this video, we're going to peel back the layers to reveal the driving forces behind interest rates and also uncover the trends that are going to shape the future for the next 12 months. But before we have a look at the interest rates themselves, we need to zoom out and take stock of where we are in both the property and the lending market right now. Now, although we've not seen the full on crash that many experts predicted for 2023, there can be no doubt that the housing market has slipped into reverse gear. According to the latest Halifax HPI, year on year, property prices have come down 4.7%, and nationwide is showing slightly higher at 5.3%. And although reporting a more modest 1.1% drop year on year, the latest Zoopla HPI is now showing property prices falling in four out of five regions. But even though we are now in reverse, the nominal house price falls are still quite modest, for now. A combination of strong wage growth, low unemployment, economic resilience, and most importantly, huge cash buffers in the system following the pandemic have actually propped up the nominal house prices. And another factor that hasn't had a huge amount of mention by the media is the fact that lenders have actually increased their stress testing so buyers don't take on unsustainable levels of debt. Now, actually, since 2015, banks have been stress testing at a 7% interest rate. And right now they're using between 8 and 9%. But it does follow that with banks increasing their stress testing criteria and the rapid rise of interest rates over the last two years, this is going to impact buying power and hit sales volumes. Now, according to the latest Zoopla report, we're on track to hit about a million transactions this year, which is 23% below 2022 and 260,000 transactions less than the 50 year average. And with both the pipeline of new supply and buyer demand dropping consistently, Zoopla are estimating will hit about the same next year in 24. So although the market is not completely ground to a halt and there's always gonna be some sales going through, Effectively, the property market is paralyzed right now. Of course, not everybody needs to buy with a mortgage and those who have cash are in a powerful position. Over the last five years, cash purchases have made up about one in five transactions. Right now, they're sitting at one in three. But before we look at the impact of all of this, I want to ask you a favor. My vision for this channel is to empower you to take ownership of your financial future. Look, this is simple. The bigger the channel is, the more resources I can put into it, and the more I can help you do that. For those of you that are part of the community already, you'll know that I'm fascinated by data. And right now, one of the stats that I'm looking to improve is that whilst the channel's getting tens of thousands of views every month, only 0.01% of those views turn into subscribers. Now, this is one of the main metrics that YouTube looks at to give the channel reach. So my favor is to ask you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Yes, it will help us grow and reach more people, but it also means that you won't miss out on future content and trainings. So please do subscribe now and hit that like button whilst you're at it. It's the only favor I'll ever ask of you. And in return, I promise, to work my hardest every single day to continue to bring you this content. Thank you. Okay, so back to it. One of the parties that's actually losing out in this crunch in the lending market right now are the banks themselves. We can see here that mortgage approvals have been dropping for the last two years. And if we ignore the effects of COVID, are currently sitting at a level only seen at the midst of the financial crisis of 2008 and directly following the trust quarting mini budget from a year ago. Now, following the rules of a free market economy, it'd seem obvious that with a drastically reduced pool of customers, the whole market is going to get more competitive as lenders fight to get the scraps. And competition will generally force prices down, in this case, the price of interest rates. So although the Bank of England base rate is currently sitting at 5.25%, with some, including myself, expecting some more rises to come, and the recent IMF State of the Global Economy report stating that in the UK, our interest rates could still hit 6% and stay above 5% for years to come. There are other experts predicting that the interest rate on mortgages could fall below 4% by the summer of next year. So. Why the disconnect? Well, there's a few factors we need to consider here. And the first of those is that mortgage interest rates are actually not connected to the Bank of England base rate and linked directly to something called the swap rates. In simple terms, the swap rate is the interest rate that institutions borrow from each other at and is the expectation of what interest rates are going to average in the coming periods. So a five-year swap rate is going to be the average expected interest rate over the next five years. And it's important to note that word average. So let's say that the five-year swap rate sits at 4% right now. That doesn't mean that the interest rates couldn't go up to six, six and a half, seven percent over the next few months before then coming down to average four percent over that five year period. But regardless, if you take out a five year fixed mortgage right now, it's going to be linked to the swap rate at the time you take the mortgage out. And these swap rates change on a daily basis. So when we had that disastrous mini budget last year, the markets got super spooked and thought that interest rates were going to go higher and stay there for longer. This meant the swap rate spiked up 
and so did the cost of mortgages. But when the lettuce outlived trusts and Sunak came in and settled the markets, the swap rates came down and so did mortgage rates. You can see that we then spiked a second time when inflation started to look very sticky before peaking over the summer when inflation appeared to start dropping quickly. Now something that is worth noting is these markets are pretty reactionary and short term in their thinking. And so often the rates are set on news that comes out that day rather than any sort of medium to long term outlook. Now as well as the swap rates, we also have to consider that banks need to be more competitive to get their customers in the first place right now. In the current market, they may even be willing to treat mortgages as loss leaders to bring in customers and monetize in other ways. But look, despite what people say on YouTube, the banks aren't completely stupid and the headline interest rate is just one metric we need to look at when comparing mortgage costs. A quick search for the best buy to let interest rates you could get on a 155 grand mortgage right now shows us this one, which is the two year fix at 3.85%. Now at almost one and a half percent below base, this of course is a great headline grabber to bring in new customers. Now don't forget, this is just for a two year fixed rate mortgage. So whilst the interest payments are 497 pounds a month, the product fee alone equates to another 322 pounds a month. Now if we add this onto our interest payments, we're actually paying 6.3% on the money we're borrowing. So the lesson here is not to be sucked into the headline rates. And just because they might be coming down, does not indicate the health of the UK property market right now. So going back to the experts mortgage rate prediction, since the summer we have seen inflation come down and with it the swap rates and the mortgage interest rates. But in true mainstream media buffoonery, somebody has drawn a straight dotted line following the current short term trend to give us a sub 4% mortgage rate by August 2024. If only life was this simple. Look, just zoom out and look at the average rates again. How long has that trend line stayed straight for? Certainly not for over a year solid. So what factors do we actually need to consider when we are predicting the future path of interest rates? Well, the first and major play here is what is going to happen to inflation over the next few months. Now, I don't want to cover all of the in-depth analysis I've done this on the channel over the last few months. I'm gonna give you a 30 second precy. So despite all the headlines and government sound bites saying we've beaten inflation, over the last quarter, it's dropped a whole 0.1%. And right now we're actually seeing a trend of increasing month on month inflation, especially when we look at services and anything that involves motor fuel. Now we will likely see a decent drop in the next CPI print as the huge spike in the month on month figures from October 22 are going to drop out of the 12 month rolling timeframe. But then we go into a quarter of relatively flat movement from November 22 to January 23. And what this means is that if the current month on month continues to go up, which at the moment all the trend lines are indicating it will, then we could very well see secondary inflation come in by spring 24. It's also worth saying that I think if we don't see a significant drop in the next CPI print, then I think we're gonna be in hot water for about six months to come. Now, the other thing we need to keep an eye on are geopolitical crises that are actually totally out of our control. Now, the Russian invasion of Ukraine last year actually sent a huge supply shock through the economy and without a doubt contributed to the acceleration of inflation in 2022. And right now, the current crisis in Gaza has the potential to spill over into other areas of the Middle East and contribute further. And then finally, although mortgages are not set on the Bank of England base rate, we still need to be aware of it. With an apparently resilient economy, a labour market that's still tight, even if it's softening slightly, and persistent and sticky inflation, all of these factors are going to feed back into the next Bank of England base rate meeting this week. The question is, will they take that objective data and hike the interest rates up again? Or will there be too much pressure from their lords and masters in the Treasury who are having to plug huge losses due to the current bond market turmoil and the losses that Bank of England are taking from their quantitative tightening cycle? Thursday's result is going to be telling, but I would urge caution to anybody making decisions based on mainstream media predictions that we're at the top of the mortgage rate cycle and over the next 12 months, they're just gonna be coming consistently down. I certainly wouldn't be betting my mortgage on that possibility.